Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. I am continuing in the Lord's Supernatural series. Please remember that the Master's Voice Prophecy Blog YouTube channel is a support resource for the mastersvoice.com blog. On the blog is where you can find these written messages. I strongly encourage everyone who gets these videos, even if it is your first video, to build a habit of going to the blog so that you can see the Lord's written messages. And the reason for that is, is that as you listen, you are only getting what is called context and nuance. So you're hearing these prophetic messages delivered in a format that the Lord intends to be easier to share and easier for awareness. But if you are someone who is intent on understanding the Lord's heart for the coming time period, which is going to affect every man, woman, child, and in fact, the whole creation in the final days of days, this is this time period going forward all the way unto the end that is prophesied and taught to us in the book of Revelation, then it is necessary that you understand that you will have to do some work. You are not going to get the full understanding of what God wants you to understand, to deepen your faith and to deepen your relationship and walk with him personally by watching these videos, or I venture to say anyone else's videos. So the blog is important and almost every single video, if you look in the description box beneath the video, you will find the written prophecy where you can go and read. When you read, you will have very many less questions because the written word will answer for you many of the things that you might be tempted to ask about. So today, this is from a very long prophecy series on the master's voice. I think it came up to eight parts, and it is called Desolations Are Determined. When the Lord says desolations are determined, he is simply saying that from now until the time where he will come to judge all things, desolations, which means terrible, painful, dangerous, and destructive things are determined. They are going to happen. The things I'm talking about on TMV are not conjecture. They are not things that have come from my own imagination or things that I just thought this might be interesting to put on the internet. The Lord has sent me to tell people saved and unsaved that destructive and terrible things are going to come to this world, whether we want them to or not, whether we think it's fair or not, whether we're afraid or not, whether we're prepared for it or not, or whether we even know about these things or not. Desolations are determined part six. And the title of this one is strange fire. I received this in June 30, 2019. The banner scripture is this, then will appear in heaven, the sign of the son of man. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Matthew 24 and verse 30. Now I think this is Yes, this is part of a, this is the second part of speaking about the coming of strange beings, including aliens, including fallen angels masquerading either as other creatures or masquerading as, or revealing themselves as themselves. And that is Desolations Part 5. That is already a video. So this is the second part. And I was at church back then and we had just finished service and I went into the backyard of where we used to have services and I was just basking in the presence of the Lord and marvel marveling at how amazing he is and I heard the spirit of the Lord say to me fire in the sky fire in the sky and I instinctively looked up and then I said Lord what is it what is it Lord what kind of fire are you talking about the weapons that I saw exploding over New York city? Is it missiles? Because I had had an open eye vision very early in the morning. I heard someone yell in my room arrows. And when I opened my eyes, I wasn't in my room. I was in an alleyway or no, I was just in the middle of New York city. And as I was watching, the sky was filled with approaching, uh, missiles. And so I was asking the Lord, is it missiles? And he said to me, and I will read, so please listen carefully. This is not man-made. What I speak of is strange fire and profane. Profane means cursed or filthy. 
He said the skies will be painted a strong red color like wine, and there will be other colors as well, gold and purples and blues. When you see these colors appearing on the cloud, then look to yourselves, which means watch yourselves very carefully, because the devil is about to come down to you and dwell among the sons of men. Strange beings, profane and rejected sons that will have the appearance of man, but they are not. Unclean ones that have been put forever out of the presence of God will now be coming down in appearance as angels of light to deceive mankind and take a terrible toll of revenge upon them. Satan has hated man since his creation. In the day that I made man as my creation, vengeance was kindled in the cherub's heart. He rages against my love for my creation. He crept up after them to steal their robe of favor from them and leave them stripped as Joseph. Now we know the story of Joseph in the Bible and how his brothers hated him. To be fair, Joseph's brothers didn't really hate him without good cause. He was the favorite child of his father and the father should not have done what he did, which was to distinguish Joseph with a robe that made it clear that Joseph was preferred by his father from the others. But that robe of favor God is saying here is something that he put on mankind, which is why I always say that Part of the reason that many people will die, and I'm not speaking curses, so those who don't have understanding, spare me your views, please. When I'm saying these things, I'm saying these things in the authority of the Lord, and I'm speaking these things from the revelations that the Lord has given me. Many people will die with the coming of aliens and fallen angels. And the reason for this is because they have a hatred for the Lord God and they have a love for things that God hates. So zombies and vampires and witches and Halloween and the occult and what is satanic and what is cursed, such as angels that have rebelled against God, but are now revealing themselves little by little, bit by bit, as aliens and the offspring of whatever they have created, revealing themselves to man little by little in preparation for a very grand reveal. There is a huge, and when I say huge, I am talking about hundreds of millions of people out there who are not content to be human beings. It's not enough for them to be humanity. They want to be something more. They want to hear the narrative that is telling them that they are angelic beings that are trapped in this flesh body, having a flesh experience. They want to believe that they are from the serious dog star. They want to believe that the strange seeds that have been planted in their minds minds through a combination of what they consume online, a combination of what they have been reading for years, and then the loud mass media storyline, such as they are among us and could there be more? These things have led the human heart to become very lifted up, very, very arrogant and prideful against God. People no longer want to be people. They want to be anything else that is attached to more power that has an undying nature. They don't want to be Adam and Eve. They don't want to be dust that God loves. They are searching for ways to exalt themselves. And it is for this reason that God will allow Satan and all these fallen creatures to destroy humanity greatly. So take heed to these words when you hear me and see me taking my time to come on this channel and speak out what God has said. There will be mass death on this planet. I am telling you based on what the Lord has revealed. I saw into a time when Isaiah 13 had fulfilled itself. There is a verse in Isaiah 13 that says, a man shall be more rare than the gold of Ophir. Bluntly put, it means that to find a living, breathing human being will be harder than it was in the ancient times to find that precious and specific rare gold that the, that the region of Ophir was known for. People will be taken away and consumed. And I'm not talking about sucked into a vortex and taken to another dimension. They will be killed. These creatures and their ships, especially the alien ones, will eat people to the point that afterwards, God showed me their bloody bodies. The ships had the power to suck and take 
tissue and flesh and blood and bone and pulp it into such a manner that when I saw people afterwards, they had been killed inside their clothing and rolled up into these big bloody balls. And just think about how impossible it is for us who have sharp angles and bones to be crushed and pulped until we can just be rolled up into a bloody dead meatball. I saw these bloody dead meatballs all over the surface of the earth. I was still alive at that time and the Lord showed me this is what it will be like. This is the reward of those who hate truth and love deception. This is why 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9 up to about verse 11 says that when Satan appears, he will appear with mass deceptions, moving with extreme power and all lying signs and wonders. So when the Lord says that angelic beings will be coming down on the back of these beautiful sunsets and beautiful, amazing, bloody dawns, red dawns that we're starting to see, just here and there. They are not prolific yet. The Lord absolutely knows what he is talking about. He knows the true children of God who will listen to his warnings, and he knows the ones who will be drawn to Satan's many manifestations of power and be destroyed. He said that the rejected sons, for the angels are sons of God. Read your Bible. Genesis chapter 6 explains it. And Enoch chapter 7 unto 16 gives you everything else that you need for context, understanding, warning, and wisdom. They are the sons of God and they have the ability to appear as man. He said rejected sons that have the appearance of a man, but they are not unclean ones that have been put out of my presence forever will now come down to you showing angelic glory. So some of them will come looking like men, but some of them will come so bright. They will come so shining. And you know, human beings, anything that is novel, anything that is different, anything that is ethereal, meaning that it is not of this earth, but seems to appear from another dimension. We love it. We automatically, even in the church, people think that the appearance of any bright and shining being is automatically from God. It has to be God because God has the angels. Let me tell you something. There is a whole section of angels out there in the wild, wild west doing their own thing. They do not have any God. They serve no master. They are lords of themselves and they are sitting in the second heaven having meetings about what will happen to flesh on this earth. The Lord Jesus is listening to all of it and he knows who will make it and who won't. And so the choice is with us. The Lord says, man is my child and my own beloved, but the devil hates humanity and his only wish is to be among them, savaging them like a lion savages a trainer when he becomes trapped in his cage. This strange fire announces the time of great weeping and sorrow for the angels of light will descend out of the clouds and come and live with you. They will present themselves as bearers of peace, light, and understanding. But these fallen reptiles and other beings will persuade all who listen to them that they are good, that they are friends of humanity. But I tell you again, look to yourselves. Look, pay attention, see, and urgently take heed among yourselves because they are only coming with one intent, to pluck life from your spirit to steal life from your blood, and indeed, to press your flesh until you, mankind, are extinguished like thin and weak candles. Perilous times are coming. I say again, perilous times are coming. And so the Lord is here revealing things that I really did not know at the time he was showing me. I did not know that there are fallen beings that appear as reptiles that come looking like lizards and snakes. I've shared on the master's voice, there was a dream. I think it's, it's concerning transhumanism. So if you look up that word, you might find this dream where God showed me that there are so many people living among us on this earth, but especially here in the United States who are descended from a reptile family, a reptile background. I have seen, and God has shown me that there are people who have scales underneath their skin. So they have scales just beneath the outward appearance of skin. And what happens is if these people get extremely hot, for instance, if these people are in a very hot and humid environment, which snakes don't really like, or if they are in a 
if they are upset, if these people become visibly upset, visibly angry, or just uncomfortable in the vessel in any way, the Lord showed me that these scales have a tendency to rise to the surface. So you might find in the future doctors showing up and telling you, oh, this is a new and rare form of eczema. It absolutely is not. The Lord has shown me that there are people who have webbing between their fingers. The Lord has shown me that there are people who have extra digits and extra finger and extra toe, which is just a throwback, not to any disease that they're telling you, but to the fact that long ago, the fallen mixed with people and they gave birth to giants, 3,000 else. Women brought forth these giants who progressively decreased in height as the mixing was happening. And I've shared that if an apple and an orange keep mixing and one of them is stronger, eventually the traits of the other will go away until you only find a few Hail Marys to the, the lesser genetic trait. And so because humans kept intermingling with Nephilim, the Nephilim began to lose their size. But in these modern days, because Satan has greatly upped his game. The Nephilim do not, do not look like Nephilim. They look, some of them, perfectly like people. There will come pure Nephilim that are still 20 and 30 and 50 feet high, but there are Nephilim that have been engineered hybrid, hybrid beings that look just like people. There are so many different forms, and I speak only out of the revelations that God has given me. So I do not have answers to some of the questions that people ask, which is why I always say, when you read the words of the Lord, they are what they are. I do not go above and beyond the Lord's commission to add my own views or to add anything. I speak what I am shown. Some people have reptile um, reptile throwback. They have webbing between their fingers and their toes. Some of it, the Lord says, will not be high. So you will not see a very high wall of flesh like Aquaman or whatever. It will just be something that is a little bit higher than what we naturally are given as our finger divisions. I also saw that these people are fantastic as swimming. They swim the way orca the whale and dolphins would swim. They absolutely love water and they are, please excuse me, they are fantastic in water and they have scales beneath the skin and they also sometimes will be snakes. They look like crocodiles. I have seen, they look like these ones come with, um, a very hard and prickly back, but all of this is inside the flesh. All of this is kept inside the flesh. When they are ready to manifest, this flesh just kind of morphs off them and that other form will come out as bold as you please. So some of them have a snake form. I think in Indian mythology, they have something called Navi or Nabi. They have this in their history, stories of very wise and old people that they used to seek almost as shamans. And the upper part will be a person and the bottom part will be a serpent. There are people like that descended among us today. And God says that when the strange fire begins to appear in the heavens, more and more often, it will be signaling a time of great weeping and sorrow that is coming because these creatures will come to earth and live with us. This is not a joke. This is not a suggestion. When the fallen ones of all of them manifest themselves as you will hear in dreams to come. The governments of the world, I don't know what world governments will do, but I know that this one, this one will pretend that they did not know, but then say, oh, we should be very accommodating and welcoming to the visitors, to the newcomers, and people will live with these beings here. The Lord gave me such a troubling dream of a cultural night where the United States of America was having a program featuring these creatures showing their talents mixed with people. And when I found myself in that audience, that was one of the days that I truly regretted sleeping in. So God says that they are coming to be among us, to suck life from the human spirit, to steal life from the blood. This is basically emptying human beings like a straw. If you think that these creatures are coming here to eat burgers and steak, may you correct your understanding. 
Perilous times is what God calls this. And so he continued speaking to me in that backyard. And he said, at the appearance of this strange fire, learn to stay in your homes. Learn to limit the time that you are spending outdoors in the natural wildlife areas and parks. So to those who like hiking and just go off for days and stuff out there, the Wendigo and the Wolfman and other things like that are not what you are going to find out there one day. And the funny thing about this day is you never know when it is coming. The Lord says it will be a signal. When you see the sky like this, leave the places that you are and go to your homes or go to the nearest safe place that you can be until you can get home. These clouds will appear like fire and they will be mixed with cerulean, which is a very beautiful sort of blue. These clouds are strange shaped and they will be sometimes like a bowl or sometimes like a stack. This is evidence of the fallen ones hiding themselves. These creatures are sensitive, please excuse me, to the smallest, tiniest stimulus. They can hear and see over incredible distances. They can track better than any hunting dog. They can see in the dark. Those who go picnicking or keep spending time in the wild, you will be hunted like prey and consumed. Flesh will be eaten by these beings. They are corrupted, fallen, utterly reprobate, and their only intention is to snuff out life from this planet before the time that I come. Just a moment, please. The Bible says in Genesis 1.14, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and to mark days and years. Another version, the Berean Study Bible says, And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to distinguish between the day and the night, and let them be signs to mark the seasons and days and years. And so we see that the Lord made the lesser light, which is the moon and the stars, and he made the greater light, which is the sun, and he made them to mark the times and the seasons. So in the days when the earth was young, when the earth was a young being or a young experience, the sun and the moon were there to tell you that it is dawn, it is mid-morning, it is noon, it is afternoon, it is late evening, and now it is night. And the moon and the sun did their work and the luminaries, which are the stars, were used to mark the times and the seasons and the equinoxes and things like that. But now that we are at the ends of times, excuse me, please. Now that we are at the ends of times, now that we are at the final rolling up and ending of everything, you find that the sun and the moon are now being used to mark more than just day and night, afternoon and dawn. They're being used to mark prophetic times and seasons. They are being used to mark important, they're being used to mark important events that are rolling through to show humanity where humanity is on the Lord's prophetic clock. So because of this, God wants us to be mindful when we see new and different phenomena taking place. I spoke in a recent video about the fact that the Lord said that all the all the 10 plagues of the Exodus will come back. We will see blood, bloody water across the earth as a judgment for sin. We will see pestilences. We will see those plagues that Moses walked in and one of them will be darkness. So the Lord has said to me in some of the messages that the darkness will be exactly as it was in the book of Exodus. And that was da darkness for three days. But also he has said to me that darkness will blanket the earth, a darkness that will be so heavy and so thick that people will not be able to see their hand in front of their faces. And the Lord showed me that in those times, because human beings are very hard of hearing, human beings always truly listen to this. Many people always believe that there will be an exception when they have a need. So the Lord will give a blanket instruction. If you see in the Bible, the Lord will say, sanctify yourselves, wash your clothes, stay away from your wives for three days, because in three days I will be among you. Every single person in the community of Israel who knows that God is a loving father, but also a consuming fire would immediately follow to the letter and to the T 
what Moses or Joshua or whoever else told them. But you will see along the stories in the Old Testament that there are always people who are, unfortunately, in these final times, the majority of people. These people believe that when God speaks, God is not referring to them and their family. So when God says, for instance, that the harm that causes harm kills, then these people will say, but what about Christians? As if Christians are made from another type, and flesh, type of flesh and blood that cannot be affected by evil that goes into flesh and blood veins. So they hear that God says that if you take the harm, it will cause disease, it will cause sickness, it will cause neurological damage. But then they will still ask, but what about my mother? As long as your mother falls within the subset of human, that word will apply unless there is repentance and crying out for mercy by the one who did the, did the deed. The other person cannot cry out. The other person can only cry out for the scales of pride and hard heartedness to fall so that the one who did the deed realizes that they are in violation of God's order and cries out for mercy. And so when, when God told Moses that he was going to send darkness throughout the land of Egypt, not a single person who was living within Egypt borders as an Israelite went to Moses and said, do you think that God meant us to? They listened to what God said and they stayed in their homes. And this is why the scripture says, there was light in the Israelite dwellings. Wherever people obey the laws of God, absolutely, the Lord will always release a subset of mercy in the midst of judgment. So at times he has said to me that this darkness will be for a period of days, three days as it was in the Exodus. And then at times he has simply told me that darkness will blanket the earth, but that there will be many people who think that the darkness does not apply to them because they have stuff to do. So they have to go out and check on their car or they have to go out and check on their animals on the farm or something, and many will lose their lives. And the reason is that in that darkness at that time, the devil will be unleashed to do his worst. So there are things that will be coming out from caverns in the ground. There are things that will be coming down from portals in the sky, as I shared in the dream, the silver mist. I think that video was recently made. There are things that will be walking the darkness. You know, it will be the terror that walketh the darkness, the pestilence that walketh the darkness, exactly as Psalm 91 says. And if a person feels that their personal need supersedes God's instruction to stay in the home, then whatever happens is squarely upon that person. The Lord says that these beings eat flesh, that they are fallen and utterly reprobate. I will say this and I hope it's for the last time. Please do not ask me if they can repent. Please do not ask me if God will have mercy on them. When people say these things, it shows that they are very unstudied. And it also shows that they do not have a proper grasp and understanding of God's nature. God is holy and all who are with him or all who hold some hope of ever being with him, which is humanity that wants to spend eternity with the father has to be holy as he. Nothing unclean, nothing undead, nothing filthy, rejected, or sinfully prideful as the fallen angels, Satan, and those who turn into reanime at the end of time, or anything like that, is going to be welcomed into God's eternal kingdom. The Bible says that the streets of heaven are paved with gold. Do you really think that there are going to be werewolves and vampires lurching through those streets? This shows that there is not an adequate understanding of the personage of the Heavenly Father. And this is why the hearts of people are led to think this way. They are corrupted and reprobate, which means that they cannot be one to forgiveness. There is nothing in them that wants to abandon their current state to return to God. And if you study the words that Enoch wrote to explain where these angels were, how they fell and how they came to be, God made it clear from those times that he will never show them mercy. Never with God means never. His word is immaculate and it, immovable, and it is by his word that all things are upheld in the creation. So when God says he will never, it means that he will never. And we should understand his position. We need to move from our viewpoints and line up with the Father.
Pay attention, for the sky will become an alarm clock that will show forth and warn of many things. So there will be midday darkness, as it was in Exodus. There will be noontime darkness. There will be overdue darkness. This is where the darkness lingers for many days and does not lift. There will be perils in darkness. There will be terrors in darkness. There will be redness of the skies. There will be redness of the moon and other heavenly bodies. There will be the stars winking out at night. So this is where you see stars going on and off like light bulbs so that the earth becomes uncharacteristically darker than it should be. And there will be signs in the sun, the moons and the, the moon and the stars, and also powerful weather phenomena. So as these things begin to happen, you will find that this thing that they are calling climate unrest, climate unchanged, it is going to actually be powerful weather phenomena that we begin to see in this earth. Excuse me, please. And one of the things that I saw is that there will be a rise of something called sea nados. I think that's what people call them, sea nados. The Lord said to me that they were sea tornadoes. That is what he called them. And this was powerful columns of water that rolled up into the sky. They literally sucked the sea up into a funnel and then they rushed inland and dumped all that water on the land and they caused a lot of devastation. There will also be a lot of fires and there will just be, um, I spoke of it in one of the recent videos concerning zombies, that the weather will just do what it wants. It is not going to follow seasons anymore. It's not going to be winter, spring, and then summer and fall as we know. It is going to be snowy and then um, bright sunshine and then rain and sometimes all of this in the same day. Then he said, and this needs to be heard with the heart, wake up my church and stop sleeping. Wake up and see the devil coming down to you with great wrath, as was prophesied to you by John, my prophet. Revelation 12, 12 is this scripture. Wake up and pay attention or you will perish along with the unbeliever for not believing the things that were told to you so that you could prepare yourselves, your homes and your loved ones while you still had time. Wake up and pay attention to the world around you and warn others while you can. They rejected me when I was among them. So stop complaining that you will not be a watchman because you are always rejected. Is the student greater than his master? If I could be rejected and I still told them to repent for the kingdom was at hand, why can't you? Repent, my church and start doing the same works of evangelism, warning and teaching about the times of the end as you once did and as you should do. Believe the words of this prophecy. You will surely see it fulfilled. That is all. Thus saith the Lord. And so this is a warning that I constantly bring on the master's voice. It cannot be new to anyone who has been watching these videos that the church is asleep and that the church is greatly drugged with the promises of glory and the promises of great revival and the promises of many multifarious lies that I do not have the time to go into and that I do not even know in depth because I do not listen and I do not love liars. The church has this heart of following teachers that strongly reflect the lies that are in the heart of the church. There are very few people who have separated from this end times Babylon system. The Babylonian system is a system that was greatly given over to wine and women or boys, if that was your preference, and song. So it was a, it was a, it was a system that catered greatly to the flesh and greatly to enjoyment. And the reflection of that has not escaped the modern day church today. When people are talking about repentance and holiness and walking in righteousness before the Lord and fighting the good fight of faith and especially the constant fight that we all will face as humanity, which is fighting the fight against sin. It is a very uncomfortable situation. And many of the times, because people are convicted, they become ashamed. I shared this process that when people hear the truth of God's word, they become convicted. And when a man is convicted, he feels ashamed. And when a man feels shame, he becomes angry. And once a 
person becomes angry, he then feels that he has the right to refute, refuse, push off, and cast away the words of the one that caused him to become convicted in the first place. But to those who love life, and as the Bible says, and I love this phrase, if you love length of days, which means that you actually want to live a fulfilled life and live to the full number of days that God has for you, then the Lord says that such people must wake up and pay attention. People have to stop listening to false teachers and false prophets. There is a great love in the United States of America for lies such as a great revival is coming coming. But I ask you, in a nation that is cutting the babies out of the womb and mailing the abortion pills direct to the door, where are you expecting revival without first a mass acceptance in the nation that this nation is reprobate? She is full of apostasy and she is extremely sinful and people have to accept this and fall to their knees and mass as they did in Nineveh. Only when there is gross outpouring of repentance and acceptance that America America has sins that should not even be mentioned in the daylight, but I am compelled to mention them because the Lord troubles my sleep with them and then sends me out to be as a trumpet, saying, this nation traffics men, women, and children, and young boys, that they engage in sexual practices that should not happen, that the women lie in their blood and partake of sexual activity when they are on their time of feminine cleansing, that the men lie with men and have abandoned the the natural use of the woman and have no interest in being with women, have no interest in being fathers, that the women are licentious and extremely exposed and say that it is their feminist right and they should not be shamed for exposing their hidden treasures which are actually intended only to be uncovered within the bowl of a sacred marriage between a man and a woman. Where can such a nation as this one fall in licentious and very fragrant, flagrant and open, bold with her sin before Jesus Christ. Hope that the Lord will pour out glory upon a trash can and a cesspool and bring revival. How is this math being accepted by the widespread national church in this country? Things that people fear to do in other countries happens here. And yet the church sits clapping themselves into a coma at prophetic conferences waiting for Jesus to come and rapture them. Yet the Bible says, sinless, spotless, without wrinkle. That is the only way that we will enter into God's kingdom. There is deep and gross confusion globally, nowhere more reflected than here. And so when you hear someone speaking in 2022 of things that sound like they come out of a sci-fi movie, the Lord wants us to understand that it is not without cause. Sin has overflowed the boundaries internationally and nowhere more than here in the nation that God himself calls mystery Babylon. And so as Babylon is continuing her inevitable path, to Revelation chapter 17 and Revelation chapter 18, where the Lord God will see to it that she is obliterated into smoke and ash in a single hour. Let the sleeping church within her walls and let the vigilant church within her walls take heed to the fact that God says, the fallen, the demonic health beings called hybrids, the Nephilim, the non-hybrid ascended master pretenders known as fallen angels, the people who have manifested all the various um, genetic traits that have come down through the centuries and that now are hiding in a very vast majority of the humanity that looks human but is not, let all hear and take heed. Jesus will come and will purify, but he is not coming with clouds and rainbows, but with a whip and refiner's fire, and he will start at the very threshold in the doorway of what is known as the church. Thank you for being with me. I'm Celestial, and thank you for sowing into this ministry. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for all your thumbs ups and your likes. These are social media credits, I guess, that cause the algorithm to recommend this content. You can also recommend this content person to person by sharing this video. Please go to the blog and read these prophecies. And until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.